guys. Welcome back. Long time no see, right? Anyway. So, I know I said I was going to be discussing another book last time. I don't even remember what that book was called, but I didn't like it. So, sorry about that. The book we're talking about today is called Gulp um, Adventures on the Elementary Canal by Mary Roach. I like this book. Um, basically, it's everything you wanted to know and maybe were too afraid to ask in public um, about the whole process from ingestion to digestion to excretion. Um, so, this might be gross to some people. Skip this <laughs> to the end if you don't want to hear about it. So, um, when talking to a sensory consultant, um, the author was getting more information, um, you know, about kind of her background, the sensory consultant's background, and she said that, um, the sensory consultant said that when she was a child, she liked to smell her parents' leather goods. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. But I smell like everything all the time. If it's not something that I know or that I've had, I will smell it. Especially food. I always smell my food. I mean, the olfactory senses, for me at least, work really well. So, I like it. It's very efficient for me. Um, Kurt, what I am getting at is that there is a point at which efficiency crosses over into lunacy. I'm probably more of the latter because I'm kind of OCD about things and I'm super cheap and will recycle to the nth degree before I throw something away. Because I'm a cheap, tacky girl like that. So, in talking about Fletcherism, which is chewing until there is nothing but liquid left. You chew, you chew, you chew, you chew. I mean, it takes forever to eat a meal. It sounds ridiculous. Um, a test subject lived on a glass of milk and four Fletcherized corn muffins. Um, a day for eight days. That's all I ate. Ugh. Apparently they could still get the nutrients, but I'm like, where's my meat? Sorry vegetarians, vegans, but I'm meat. I need my meat. Anyways, so at the end of the eight days, he produced a bowel movement days. Crowd. Squatting upon the floor of the room, without any perceptible effort, he passed into the hollow of his hand the contents of the rectum. The excreta were in the form of nearly round balls and left no stain on the hand. There was no more odor to it than there is to a hot biscuit. Yum. Um, this one was a gross too. There once was a man, this is a true story, named Alexis St. Martin, who was accident accidentally shot in his side with a duck shot. So a nearby army surgeon um, who was assigned to a garrison close to where this accident happened named William Beaumont was called to help. So, he found part of St. Martin's lungs protruding through the external wound of his side. And below that, there is another protrusion. This one, however, actually being the stomach. Um, with a... It's a dang shame. You can't even read your own writing. With a puncture in the protruding portion. 
The doctor then realized he could watch the stomach processes in action. So, I mean, he fixed the guy up, but still kind of left an, a window, basically, into St. Martin's stomach so that he could see the processes of, you know, digestion when a human being is eating. It gets gross. So he, uh, the doctor, would put his tongue on the mucus coat of the stomach, and apparently he tasted no acid. That's disgusting. But apparently it was more common um, than we realized um, before the days of labs where doctors could ship off bodily fluids to check on it. Um, a lot of times the tongue and nose were used to check to see if things were in working order. Uh, um, the author, in talking at one point about how oral processing works, um, referred to oral processing as a moist ballet. And uh, that phrase just brings horrifying thoughts to my mind. Like, are the corn muffins, like, dancing in that guy's stomach? To Swan Lake? I'm sorry. So, anyways, in the words of Anna Doty, I hope that's right, who is uh, the curator of the Mutter Museum, every hospital has an ass box. And an ass box is a box containing all of the items foreign objects that are retrieved from people's butts. Quote, feces are consumed as they extrude from the anus. So um, that was from a dean at the Grad School of Nutrition from Cornell. Um, the poop eating was actually observed in rats and in order to prevent autocoprophagia, um, which would alter their controlled diet studies because, you know, they're fed a certain amount of food and a certain type of food, but then they would turn around and eat their own poop and it would throw the studies off completely. So they actually invented these, li these little leather vests that they would put on them and it prevented the rats from turning around to grab the poop out of their butt and eat it. There is a picture on that if you google it. It looks kind of like rodent S&M, but still it's kind of interesting. Uh, quote, I don't like to think of fungoli chimps as shit eaters, but what are you gonna do? Um, also known as seed reingestion, they poop in one hand and then extract seeds from it with the other hand or with their lips. But they're very clean because then they'll wipe their lips on the bark of trees close by. And then more plants and trees grow because, you know. Um, also, the civet, which is kind of like a cat-like animal, will poo on the forest floor. Then, I'm guessing humans, because really who else is going to do it, um, come along to get the beans that uh, the civets have eaten. And the beans aren't just any beans, they're actually coffee beans. Um, apparently the animal's digestive enzymes alter the taste of the beans and to a pleasing manner. So then people will go and sift through civet poop to get out the beans. And you can look that up too. It's gross. Poop coffee. Like coffee doesn't already make you poop. Then that made me think, so do you have like more poop because it's from poop already? Is it more fibrous? 
Who knows? Maybe. Because coffee makes you poop. But I don't think it's just the coffee. I think it's the caffeine in the coffee that makes you poop. Who knows? I'm no expert. Anyways, this book was fantabulous. I give it a 5 out of 5. I always love Mary Roach. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Always share this video if you like it. And the next book I'm going to be reading is called Parasite by Mira Grant. Pretty interesting. It's about, uh, it's fiction, but it's about tapeworms. Oh, and I wanted you to meet my friend who's always with me at home. His name is Mr. Poopy. Hi, Mr. Poopy. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.